Daniel Caesar joins me now in Studio Q. Hi, Daniel. Hey, man. How are you? I'm doing good. That's a great band you got. Yeah. Bro, I'm, I'm, it's a blessing. They're a blessing for real. They're really good. Like, that's, that's, you guys were in a very, very serious pocket. Like, I don't know what order we're going to air that in, but that's, that's beautiful music. Are you getting used to it? You haven't been performing too much, though. Are you, are you getting used to it? Yeah, more and more. As yeah. Time, yeah, as time goes on. We're, I want to say, like, 11 or 12 performances deep. What's the, hard, like, what's the hardest part of it? What is the hardest part? Um, I think I always assumed that it wouldn't be that taxing on, on the body just because, you know, being young and stuff, you kind of just, like, never – that doesn't usually phase you. But actually, yeah. you'll get, like, tired and sick and stuff like that. But it's not – nothing – I don't think I've come up against anything – hard that i should be complaining yet you know no and you know songs about gratitude i just started getting hung over for the first time in my life hey you know i'm just start, i'm just starting to hit 30 so like <laughs> i'm just starting to get hung over for the first, you, got, you got some time before that starts happening before, yeah. yeah 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 so you're from oshawa yeah oshawa ontario oshawa so what was uh what's growing up in oshawa like what was it like for you <laughs> i'm gonna be honest I didn't, I didn't really like it no well, i mean yeah i feel the suburbs is um there's this weird, like, lonely feeling to it because it's, like, everything exciting you ever see is th- through your through your, your screen, you know, or your phone or whatever. But all the cool stuff is happening in major cities around the world, and you kind of just, you get FOMO. Cause I, I, so much great stuff is going on, and I'm just, like, in this little house way far out in the middle of nowhere, you know? But it's, it's uh, I don't really like it, though. Did you, did you go into Toronto a lot growing up? No, I mean, when I was allowed to, but it was kind of, like, when I was, when I was on my own, then I could. It was kind of just like I went from a lot of restrictions to just absolute freedom. So I, that's when I moved out here. Yeah, because you you grew up in the church, right? Yeah, yeah. It was singing in the church, going to church once a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, well, without fail. And what was that like? Hey, I mean, I personally, it definitely helped shape who I am today because I didn't get it growing up. And I would like I had to do it regardless of if I understood understood what was totally going on or not. And th- I feel like that kind of shaped my music now because it's a lot of it is trying to work through things that are but that I don't totally understand. If that makes sense, you know. Well, yeah, I know you and your you, you and your parents had a lot of arguments and in, in, in and you, you, yeah, I mean, there's, the same there's, as there's a certain though. contention though that happened because you know they were they were kind of more steeped in the church and and they didn't want you listening to to music that was outside of it. Is that right? Mm-hmm. And well, tell me a little bit more about that. I mean, in at the time, you know, I, like my older music, I guess it's a, not angry, but like I was definitely a like a disgruntled dude or something i don't know because you know realistically my parents were they loved me and they were just trying to they had their their view of how of how one should live their life you know and and the type you know garbage in garbage out all that stuff so like they had a a very like streamlined view of like viewing the world Mm -hmm. as evil and good Mm -hmm. and not a lot of I've, i've grown and realized that things are a little more complex than that but it was it was just evil and good so so i mean it, it takes I don't, but yeah, it but it takes I'm time and like i think i think that's part of like growing up one of the things you learn when you grow up is that there exists this gray area you know like yeah exactly you know you think that there's only there's only two ways of going about it like when when did you I mean, I, I I know it's kind of weird to be getting personal with all these people around and i'm i'm, I'm aware of that but like or, but like you know when do you remember first having that kind of awakening that, okay, so my parents teach me that this is the certain way things are going. I know there's a good, that there's evil. W- when did you start realizing that there was another way of looking at things? I was, I was talking to my friend about this the other day. I remember I uh, one day I just had like the realization that I was like, when you get real with yourself and you know, every day you tell people, you know, like I love God, like, you know the things you know what would Jesus do all like yeah, the things yeah. as a christian you're supposed to say and like believe and operate by the wristband yeah, yeah. all that all <laughs> all the good stuff yeah but i was like realistically i've never met the guy i don't you know i'm just taking what other people have said he's done for me and living my life according to that but i've never met the guy i've never i've never like heard the still small voice i've never like all those things that all these other people that have been touched by god talk about i never got it so i was just I was like, hey, realistically, I don't, I don't love God, cause I, 
personally, if I'm being real with myself, I've never, I've, I love music. I felt the Holy Spirit move when there's music. So for me, that's God. But this idea of, I realistically, I, so he knows, he knows that I don't love him. Because if, I, if, I, if I'm real with myself, I'm like, I'm just trying to get to heaven. I'm, just, I'm not trying to go to hell. That's all. Mm-hmm. And he knows that because mm-hmm. he knows everything. So I was like, hey, I'm just not going to fake it. I'm just going to, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to run around and, and uh, promote things that I don't, that I believe are wrong or like talk about things in my music that I think are wrong. But I'm also not going to, what my, what my parents told me that, that lane, I just don't think it's that simple. So mm-hmm. I'm going to kind of try and do my thing. And you got out, you, you, you kind of escaped, right? Yeah. Well, t- t- tell me more about that. So it was, you, did you, was it in the middle of the night? Was it? Was it while they were asleep? Like you know, when you say you got out of Oshawa, like what do you mean you escaped from Oshawa? No, it was as the thing. I don't want it to ever seem like like uh, my parents were 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 like very. They were like really good to me, and I was I was just like I knew what I wanted. I always knew what I wanted. I wasn't gonna let anyone stop that. And mm-hmm. I'm honestly I'm thankful because I'm here because of that friction that we had. But um, it was just a. Uh, it was just a symbol like these are how these are like the rules we have set out. This is how like we run our household. We love you and if you're not trying to if you're not down with that, you know, go go with God. But like you gotta go. So it was graduation weekend and they weren't gonna let me like go to go to any of the parties because that was <laughs> they wanna get me get into trouble. And I was like, nah, man, I'm gonna enjoy my It was see so it's like, you know, it's you just it's it's kind of like a martyrdom thing where it's like, you know, it was for the music. But it was just, it was really just like, I wanted to do, a lot of things I wanted to do are dumb. And now I've, I've been doing them like, okay, I get why they wouldn't let me do it. <laughs> yeah, That's the thing of, is like. Are you starting to go like, oh, I think they might have had a point about bro, some of this all stuff. the time. Yeah. Where it's just like situations I'll find myself in or just things like, like, um. Like I'm late to everything, right? Yeah. I'm really like my my team. Like I I know I drive them absolutely crazy because it's like we either we'll have things we gotta do or just like get like you know just like being on time and being on your on like dotting your eyes crossing your t's. I was always the guy like I never showed up on time to class like assignments. It was like this doesn't matter. I was like this doesn't matter because this isn't real life. And when I get there, I'll be fine. Right. And then you're yeah, like, in the real minute, world, I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> and none of those habits are, you know, so it's like now I'm out here trying to do our parents. I can call back on the information, mm-hmm. but it's not the same. I was just like too rebellious, you know, it's not the same as having those habits in place already. And then, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, I think what really strikes me about your music, even I mean, the music we've heard today, the music that's on your record is, you know, for someone who, who was kind of, who kind of left his home who ha- is still, you're still kind of in a period of exploration. You're still trying to figure things out. Mm. Yet, you know, you seem to have found a place of gratitude. And I know that that term gratitude is really important to you. Yeah, I mean, it's weird because I, 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 I think I just do like a lot of self-reflection. So I try and be grateful. I feel a lot of the time, you know me, like, I feel like I, I can be... I can be, I don't want to say like, actually, no, I feel like I'm a grateful person. I don't know. I, mean, I don't think anyone's just one way like, though. You just, know? Yeah, yeah, obviously yeah. we all have moments of, but it's definitely a, a lot of, not with these songs, but with like a lot of songs that are writing. It's kind of like seeing where I'm messing up and almost like chastising yourself. Like, hey, like smart enough. And you kind of write about, it's not, I don't want to just write about love, you know, like more complex subjects and acknowledging where I'm coming short and then I, I write about that sort of thing. Talk to me a little bit about music. What were you listening to when you were when you were growing up? What what were you what what were you listening to growing up first? Um was there a lot of music in your house? Yeah, well it was yeah, it was a very very uh can't think of the word. My parents had a, a whatever filter on what came in and out of the house. So like a, a firewall, of, like the yeah, had to, <laughs> yeah, they had the firewall. But your, your dad was a singer, the gospel yeah. singer. Yeah, he sang gospel music. Yeah, so yeah, a lot of um, honestly, like there wasn't that much, like Kirk Franklin, um, Donnie McClurkin, a lot, like a lot of gospel music. Uh, Hezekiah Walker. Um, were you allowed to listen to non-gospel music? It was weird. The thing, it's always you just 
you know it's depending on the mood some days you'd be you could have something playing and someone will walk in and hear and they'll like whatever and keep doing their thing but it's just it's not worth the risk of like if you have something and just like the wrong concept or anything it's like you know when you're watching movies with your parents and then they you're or you're watching movies and then your parents come in and then a sex scene comes on or something like that yeah you turn the channel yeah, it's, yeah. It's, but it's like you just can't risk like any cursing of any kind it was it was very i get it i get it and i'm i mean i'm grateful because it created a a sort of like when you when you put a pearl in a, or a grain of sand in a pearl and it's like all the agitation it eventually I feel that's what happened so i'm thankful but yeah, a lot of, a lot of the Beatles too, and and like Pink Floyd and stuff like that. So that was okay. You were allowed to listen to that. Yeah, but I mean, everything I do, I did a lot of stuff in secret. Yeah. Right, the headphones on. Yeah. And then when you like when you so you you leave the house, you're not allowed to go to parties. <laughs> you, oh yeah. I take it you that. go to you go to the parties. When what's the point where you say like I think I want to do that? Like I think I want to be a musician. I want to say, who did I hear? I'm gonna be honest. I want to say it was like John Mayer or something. Really? I started playing guitar. Yeah. Uh, I got my first guitar at ten years old, and um, that's when I started like getting tabs and stuff. And I feel like I just because he's like <laughs> the most like, he was like the most accessible. It's kind of just you know you're waiting in the world to change. And you're like oh let me learn to play that. And yeah. Then from there you just find all G B minor C. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but then you get in the rabbit hole, and then you just find you go on like the YouTube adventures where you find this guy and then related artists and then you just go and you you like it's cool to just find the most obscure strange music when you're a kid you know and you so like go around and, but it was definitely John Mayer a, like John Mayer trio yeah was, Pino, Pino Palladino on yeah I'm not, yeah. I don't really you know the pop stuff it's like it's cute it's cool but yeah. um, John Mayer trio that was like yeah, that's, that's some good music. I'm with you. I, those, I agree with you. Those moments where he's just on, you know, just really feeling it. I just, you know, you want to actually have that specific moment, you know. It wasn't wasn't Frank Ocean a really important artist to you too? I, I got no. To be honest, yeah, it was for, even more. Even more than more. more than John. Yeah, yeah, yeah good. I, that's not them. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I because that was heard that in grade ten. I heard about him in the weekend on the same day. I feel like I'm slouching. Not that's cool. And, um, <clears throat> me too. I, I slouch all the time. It's a bro- it's the worst. I know. My, my mom would be mad at me about that. <laughs> it would be a question mark when I'm old. It's crazy. <laughs> um, but you heard the weekend, and you heard Frank Ocean same day. The same. My friend Quinn stopped me in the in the um in the cafeteria one day. I was just like, "You gotta listen to Frank Ocean in the weekend." And I I would feel like I was late because I came. They came out at different times, right? But they were kind of synced up when they were in the in the bubbling period. So I heard both of them, and I was like, "Yo, the weekend's sick, but what is this?" You know. <laughs> but yeah, what and, what did uh, you feel when you heard that music? It's hard to explain, but it was it was very relatable. It felt like something that. No, you know what it is, and that's what I strive for in my song. I think it's some of the songs you hear them, and you're it's you're almost like. You know that's an original song that he wrote that just came, but it's almost like it was already there, you know? You ever heard a song where it's like this, of course this song exists. It has to exist because, because like, the, the, these feelings exist. This, like, I've been, I felt that too. So I couldn't do it, but he did. He knew, you know? So that was, and it's not even style-wise. It's just, like, ideas and and the sounds and all I mean, it was it's hard to explain but i know what you mean like sometimes you listen to a song and it feels like it feels like well i know songwriters i don't know if you've ever experienced this but like who say they'll sit down and write the full song in the time it takes to sing it mm-hmm. you know what i mean like it's have yeah I've, I've had it happen but it's 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 rare but like you mean just like sit down and it just kind of it's like channeling or something yeah not to get into god again but like it feels it, oh it, it can feel like it's coming from somewhere else i read i read somewhere this this oh, like some buddhist type quote or something like that yeah, but yeah. it was it was like i i am the sky and my thoughts are clouds passing through or something along those lines you know this idea that like thoughts exist in a different realm like we're all here and we all because you know that thing about like i have an idea you have an idea we share ideas we both have two ideas i have an apple you have an apple i give you an apple you have two apples i don't have any apples mm-hmm. so th- ideas are different in that sort of 
in that sort of sense. So I feel like this is the same with songs. You can literally just like snatch them out of the sky. They're already there. It's just a matter of of like clearing yourself and like being still and looking for it. I feel like a lot of people we don't we don't take the time to because we're bombarded with 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 stuff, with jobs, with with payments, with bills. Like there's so much our phones. nonsense. Our phones, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous. But if you think about it. The people, the most money people you can think of, the people that really, that really did it, that all they did was take the time to like be themselves and find yourself. Because if you think about it, everybody, everybody you meet is special. We're all special. Like our moms tell us we're special and like our moms aren't lying. They're right. But the thing is so many of us just give up on it because there's so much, so much nonsense. So only a few of us are like, hey, I'm special. So I'm just going to run with this. And most of us are like, they're special, but I'm I'm special too. But I'm just gonna chill, and this, you know, it's, I don't know. I I I want to talk a little bit about music again because I mean, you, you think you think so so deeply about things, but you said you started saying something earlier that I I, I really found myself attached to, where you talked about the importance of music, like that. that I, and I think from reading quotes of yours, from from listening to you speak in the past, I, I think that music, you take music a little bit more seriously than other people do. Do you agree with that? I mean. It's weird. Yeah, I I would say yes, but I mean, it sounds pretentious. No, no, it's cool. But it's like, because it's so, it's, there's nothing, there's nothing that makes me feel as good. So that's, that's, you know, it's like my my drugs or whatever. So don't don't mess with those. It's kind of like, there's nothing, I need that. And I, I feel like I wouldn't, like, be very successful in society if I didn't have that. Like, that's like how I, how I function. I couldn't. I worked at a job. I get fired a lot and stuff like that. Like I'm not very. <laughs> Where'd you get fired from? Uh not a lot. I mean, a couple of restaurants. Yeah. But yeah, I just I don't function well in those types of environments. You feel like this is the only really path that you can that you could find yourself on. Yeah, I was. I mean, maybe I sell myself short because I got. I really got to get on my. You know, but. I um, guess this is where I belong. You come. You come into Toronto. I know. You spend a lot of time sleeping on people's couches, yeah. make, making those records. Even some time sleeping in the park, is that right? Yeah, a few times. Man, that's, it sounds cold. It sounds, sounds awful. It's crazy. I always, it's like Toronto in the summertime, but it gets cold at night, to be honest. I bet it's it pretty awful. It's kind of awful. But, no, nah, that's the thing. It's like, is, it was hard. If, if, I almost feel like this is my, most of my friends are like graduating university around this time, you know? And now is the time for me where I feel like things are kind of taking off a bit more. So it was really just, realistically, like those nights that it was, okay, I don't have very many options. Like I got to sleep on, I got to sleep outside or I could have picked up and and went home, honestly. It wasn't like I had nowhere to go. Yeah. I wasn't, it was just like all my friends, I get off work late at like 3 a.m. and I didn't make plans for where I was going to sleep that night. So everyone, everyone was already gone to sleep. But it, it was kind of just, especially being from the suburbs, because, like, life is just too easy, you know? And the, you don't feel anything. Everything's just, everything, you know, it's just, you just go to school, go to work, get a job, have some kids, do it again. You know, I just wanted to, like, feel something and, like, experience life differently. And I don't even know what I'm talking about, man. No, but, but it it was, just, you sound like you were craving that kind of challenge. I just, yeah, I wanted to experience, I wanted to overcome something other than just whining about my parents not letting me go anywhere, you know? I wanted to, like, actually, this is real. The, the more, more you feel it, the better the music sounds, I feel. I want to, I want to, the first time I heard about your music was when you played that first show at the Mod Club in Toronto. And if, uh, if you're listening to this and you don't know the story that, I'll, I'll tell you my story. I was at home. I was... On my phone, which I shouldn't have been, I should have been experiencing life a little bit more. <laughs> it happens. It I'm happens. bad at it too, man. I'm bad at it. And I see a, a lot of people who I really respect in music tweeting and, and writing things like, this is this is Daniel Caesar's first show. I'm going to see this guy, Daniel Caesar. This is his first show. This is his first show. And this is and, and the place is sold out. And and if you've never been to this place before, it's a couple of thousand people. Um, uh, is it a thousand? Mod, I feel like it was like thousand almost people? a thousand like like six hundred, seven hundred, six hundred maybe. Six hundred? I'm getting I'm getting advice from the controller. What are you thinking, Ty? You, 
I think he said seven. So we're saying seven. we're saying seven, seven, eight hundred people there. Yeah, seven, eight hundred people though. there. So but listen, most people's first show when they would go out and perform <laughs> would be to like either their parents or like <laughs> or like to four of their friends who they had yeah. to pay to show up at the bar. You come out to seven, eight hundred people. Take me back to that moment. You walk out on stage. Your band's there behind you. You look out of that crowd. <laughs> what What are you feeling? Oh, I was, it was just over. It was just overwhelming, because it was just just knowing, just knowing what we had all been through, and this was just we talked about from the basement, from back in back at in Pickering at like Sean Leon's house with the with the homies. Just talking about yeah, I want to. Actually, I remember telling somebody that I always wanted to play the Drake, the Drake Hotel. Again, if you're listening to this in somewhere else in Canada, Drake Drake Hotel on Queen Street. Yeah, not you know what? I mean, not too many people. Can it's small. It's there. like a small. It's like an important venue. Yeah, but it it's is. just a small, a smaller scale. Mm-hmm. But it was, it was just trippy. Like all those little thoughts going through your mind, and seeing people that you knew. Just thinking about. I remember, the, like grade twelve grad night when I was basically told my friend like i was just chilling with my friends and i was like i i moved out like i'm, I'm just gonna go to toronto and do music and they're you know they love me so they're trying to just like be reasonable with me like hey like don't be stupid man you can't can't be doing that stuff like just i know you're talented bro but come on let's be real now you know and then just all those just you're just up there and and all these little thoughts are there and then it's and then it's okay i gotta kill this but it was. It, it feels really good, man. It feels. You no, know, it, feel, it feels like a dream. I'm babbling right now, but yeah. No, no, it, it no. It feels like not, a dream. I, I love when you said um, it feels like I got to kill this because you're at one moment you you get like a couple of seconds to realize <laughs> that it's cool. But then if you if you sound bad the whole show, then it's not worth it. And you didn't. I mean, I I'm happy with it. I still think about it sometimes. And it's been going really well. So, yeah, it's it's a blessing, man. Um. Whenever I. Whenever I hear people get asked, you know, kind of what's the next thing coming out of Canada? What's the next thing at Toronto? Your name comes up a lot. Do you, do you feel that kind of pressure? No. I don't because I'm not there for those conversations. <laughs> I, when, they, when I hear it, I, I feel like once I start believing that, that'll mess me up. So I'm just kind of, kind of smile and nod and, and try and just write. I don't, I don't feel like I am, so... Until no. I feel like I am, then, then you, it'll we'll see where it goes. You don't you don't you don't feel inevitable. No, no, not that I'm I'm not worried anymore. I think there was a time <laughs> where I was like, hey, maybe this will work. Maybe yeah. I'll you know still gotta have the exit strategy. But I'm not worried anymore. But I want to just because I know how far I want to take in like the people that I admire, and I want to be on that level and be in those same conversations with them. So I still have like some ways to go. But you can't deny that there's been a tremendous amount of acclaim, um, praise, and and rightfully so for the music that you make. Though I I have to ask, and I thank thank you for your time today, man. It was a pleasure. Um, how how does your family feel about what you're doing now? I I mean, I like when I when I see it's good. We're all happy, and it, our relationship is definitely way better because it was it was mostly mostly me just kind of being a jerk you know so i kind of just have to and i'm still working through it i'm still trying to be you know a better person but they're cool we don't necessarily discuss music business that much have they heard your records e i think so yeah yeah i think so but it's yeah it's kind of just that's like over there like we're you're you know you're my family i'm your family like that's that's what it's about. That's just my job, you know? And when I come home, it's my job. It's definitely my life, but it's also just my job. You can separate yourself from... You can separate... There's, like, there's one Daniel Caesar. Yeah, well, that's... Yeah, that's... I'm not even Daniel Caesar, you know? That's... I'm Daniel Caesar, but that's not what my, my mother named me. So when I go home, it's a totally different... They don't say, oh, hey, Daniel Caesar. Hey, Dan- <laughs> 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 Oh, look who's here. Daniel Caesar's here. <laughs> yeah, give me on the, on the Snapchat and stuff. No, <laughs> not like that. All right. Daniel Caesar, thanks for coming in, man. Thank you very much for having me.